Hello, beauty news family. Welcome to tea time. Tea time. So, uh, this is our wine time tea time episode for November, and we are actually going to be talking about holiday releases. Now, this is not going to be like what you've experienced from us in past years with holiday releases. Those videos are the shit. The <laughs> shit to create. They're a headache. Um, and hours and hours and days and days and, and thousands of photos. Oh, thousands of and photos. And we don't have time for that no. shit this year. So no. this is just a general podcasty chat about yeah. what we think about this year's holiday releases. We did ask also on Instagram what people, like what their favorite part of like all collections mm -hmm. of this year are, and there haven't been many. Let's put it out there. No. So sports. um, yeah. So we're gonna be just talking about our thoughts of the. We are. This is season. gonna be more of a chatty video about holiday releases in general. Mm -hmm. Before we get into it, though, we do have one housekeeping thing that we need to take care of. Now, if you have been around for a long time, you will know that holiday releases generally mean something else is coming up on beauty news and that is the beauty news awards mm -hmm. we are doing them this year i think it's going to be an interesting year to see the answers they're always interesting mm -hmm. but this year i am particularly yes <laughs> keen it's to been see. a bit of a shit show it's year. been yeah it's been very interesting so if you've never experienced or seen the beauty news awards before essentially what it is is a voting system where you guys get to nominate um, brands for particular categories and then you vote on the short list mm -hmm. of brands or products for those categories and then we bring you a video telling you what the winners are yeah so, so there's, there's two steps yes. involved so there's two steps of voting now the first step is going to be choosing your nominees so essentially, if you want to get involved, just go check out the description box. There'll be a link to a blog spot, a blog post, and you will be able to put in uh, your nominees for each category. Suggestions. So yeah. So let's say, um, for example, best product of 2021. You can go in there and you can be like iPhone, not iPhone. It has to be makeup related <laughs> or beauty related at yeah. least. And it has to be relevant to the current year, so 2021. So you go in there, you make your nominations. You can nominate as many as you want, as long as it's relevant to the category and the year. Mm -hmm. And you can also vote on ones that have already been nominated. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend that you check out the list before you nominate because duplicates get deleted. Yeah. Um, you are allowed to nominate as many as you want and you can vote multiple times. So if you suggest, you know, Tatcha as best brand, but then you see someone post about Fenty, Fenty you're like, and you're wow. like, wow, I Fenty love Fenty too. Great. Yeah, you can vote for them as well. So you can vote as many times as you want. It's not secret voting. You can see it all there. Then we have round two, which will be coming up in a few weeks, and that is where we have secret voting and a short list of yeah. all of your favorites. So if you want to be involved this year, get down in the description box and get to voting. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, let's get on to the holiday chat. Let's do so it. So the way we thought we'll talk about this um, is firstly talking about roughly what we think about the holiday releases this mm. year and the vibe of 2021 mm. um, and then also talk about some brands or releases or products that our audience on Instagram were saying they're interested in and then finish up with what we're, we're, we're interested, interested in, in if yeah. anything. Yeah. So let's, like you said, the vibe. Let's talk about the vibe. It's been interesting. I feel it, it's a bit different this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like there is as much hype in the brands with their holiday releases. It feels a little bit like... Subdued. Yeah, lackluster, subdued. Yeah. And it's not that I'm just not interested in the collections. It's like it legitimately feels like there's not as much effort. I agree. In. Look, I, I was trying to distinguish between that as well. I was like, yeah. is it just that I don't care so much about ho holiday releases this year? I'm moving house in a month. You're I'm busy, on a no yeah. buy. I'm busy. I don't want to go and browse shops for holiday collections. So, is it just me, or is it is it the 
the stuff that's being released. Mm. And I was really trying to take a good look at overall what the holiday season has been like. And I think releases are coming out later. Yes. We used to see sneak peeks of holiday releases come out early as like June and July. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like we saw it a lot later this year. And there are brands that people are excited about who still haven't released their collections or revealed their collections or all of their... They're yeah. starting to release a few things, but they haven't shown what would normally be the amount that they usually release, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. they're showing two things, whereas in the past they've released 12 things. Yeah. So you kind of go, are they just pulling back mm -hmm. or are they sort of staggering the yeah. excitement? I'm not too sure. And usually, like, this is from brands that you wouldn't see them staggering. It's yeah. like, one that comes to mind is Lime Crime. Yes. Yeah, it's very, like... Meh, meh, this year whereas yeah. usually they're like bam christmas yeah we we might put on the screen a comparison of some of the past year's collections versus this year mm. this year is three packs mm. of lip products that is and not even in holiday packaging no. i know okay maybe they are staggering it but, but they never have in the past it's november and that's not historically what they do yeah yeah so we've seen a like we've seen some brands that release late like mm -hmm. urban decay is always one yeah. sort of release late they do. um but i just feel like this year there is just not much going on no. and i do have a theory i reckon this is um uh, Look, I'd love to say the pandemic made people reevaluate just releasing a bunch of shit. It hasn't because we've seen an it. abundance of shit that has been released this yeah. year and like cash grab releases. Mm. So it's not that. I think the problem has been that usually brands will plan their holiday releases either a year in advance, up to two years in advance. Mm. So that is the peak time mm. when COVID started. Yeah. So I feel like this year we're seeing a bit of a subdued holiday season because either brands weren't able to um, plan or create mm. as much as they would have liked because of lockdowns and yep. COVID Factories and, closed fa yeah, and, and shipping and yep. all that kind of stuff. So I feel like this is a bit of a run on effect from that. Yes. Yeah. I, I do think that that is probably mm. the most likely thing as well. I don't think it's brands being like, okay, we're not going to, you know, add to consumerism as much. No, no. Because we've seen so many shitty yeah. releases this year. Exactly. I don't believe that. Brands want their Christmas dollars. I know they do. Um, and a lot of these brands as well might year long be struggling, but mm. they make their coin. At Similar to, to tourism like yes. industries, they make their money in like summertime and mm. holiday time. So it's I feel holidays, like yeah. this is the peak buying time um, for the yep. makeup community there is no way brands would be like we're just releasing three lip kits when in the past that was just the tip of the iceberg yep. so i, I, I really think there's more to it just like that's all that they could manage yes that's yep. what i think as well yeah yep. i agree i think that's probably what's happening and i i think potentially next year we will still see a little bit of that overflow because factories, even if factories are opening up now, um, they've got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. So, you know, there's a limited amount of factories and there's a lot of brands. I also have another theory. I feel like what brands have started doing, and if there's a fly going around, it's annoying you. Don't worry. It's annoying, it's annoying me too. It's annoying us too. <sighs> um, I have another theory that brands are maybe not putting as much emphasis on the Christmas dollars mm. and they are now redistributing their festive seasons with Halloween and with Valentine's yeah. Day and with Chinese New Year or Lunar yeah, New Year. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like we've seen a lot more Halloween collections this year. Yeah, we did. And I, I feel like brands are starting to try to make... And we've said this in like trends and whatnot, that, mm. that brands are going to be creating um, collections for just random occasions. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe brands are trying to spread themselves over the year a little bit more so they've got more consistent income. Possibly, Rather yeah. than that peak in the holiday season. Yeah. So that might be another reason, but I really definitely think like a COVID hangover um, yeah. is why we're seeing a lot of sad late collections. I think so. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. And look, you know, Christmas season, 
a really good chunk of the Western world is shopping. Like the brands, yep. they'd be fools not to get in on it. But if they can't, then they can't. What yep. can you do? Yeah. Offer sales, I suppose. That would be the only way to sort of cash in on that. I am actually going to be really interested to see. This is not Christmas related, but close. I'm interested to see what the Black Friday holiday, uh, sales will look like this year. Mm -hmm. Because you hear so much about companies struggling to get stock. Yep. And also, when they do get stock, the um, the price of the products has gone up from the manufacturers, and the price of shipping has gone yeah, up. And import taxes, yeah, and, and they're stuff trying like that. to like absorb the costs, mm -hmm. which is going to result in hypothetically, it's going to result in worse sales. So yeah, yeah I'm look. It's all very interesting mm -hmm. when you think about things behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting. To interesting say. time for it. Mm. All right. So when we were asking people what they what they were excited for, yeah, it was really it was really enlightening. Like looking at the responses because we were asking for yes. like collections and items and mm. what specifically like are people interested in, and a lot of people couldn't pinpoint an item or a collection. Mm -hmm. uh, we had over two hundred replies, and most of them were. Packs. packs and um just general things like yeah. minis and and yeah. whatnot um or i like peppermint themed things yeah, like yeah. most people couldn't say i really love this one collection. collection and yeah. i think that is a, a sign that the brands haven't been doing anything outstanding this no year. they haven't they haven't this year is really sad looking um, I think one of the ones that we saw the most mm -hmm. suggested was actually Shantakai. Yeah. Now, guys, I I get it, Nana Glenn, okay? <laughs> I, of all people, get, get it. Get ready to clutch your pearls. Yeah, I know. Oh, exactly. <laughs> clutch your Shantakai this year. Um, but I think this is extremely telling mm -hmm. of just how fucking boring and bland everything else is. Yeah. Like, yeah, true. one person left a message saying um, they thought Shantakai was, like, the thing that they were excited about this year because the packaging is special. And I think that is, like, a big, big thing. I know it's a big thing for me. The packaging always yeah. gets me. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like a lot of the brands this year, not only are they not releasing interesting collections, but their packaging is falling short and it doesn't have that, like, special vibe. Yeah, and look... I feel like I'm in two minds about Christmas and two things, and we'll talk about this a bit more later, two things I like about Christmas releases, things that are sort of sparkly, pretty, fun, mm -hmm. and that make me go, oh, that's exciting, mm -hmm. and things that are good value, like mm -hmm. sampling of, you know, skincare packs or lip products at a discounted rate or whatever it happens to be. Those are the two things that I always sort of look out for. But at the same time, I think... Again, COVID hangover, people are less inclined to just buy things for the sake of yes. buying things. So I do think it's really important to have a little special polish to it, which mm. is often like a nice packaging something, um, but it also be something that people can wear throughout the year. And I feel like brands yeah, it, are generally pretty bad wearable. at doing that. Mm. Um, in the past, we've seen a lot of like fun packaging, but then like rainbow palettes mm. or whatever it happens to be, sparkly lipsticks. And you go, I don't want to waste my money on that. I can't wear a sparkly purple lipstick to work. Yeah, exactly I mean, right. I can. But do I want but to? But do I want to? Yeah. So I feel like in previous years, people have had more disposable income or have the, had the security to be like, I can just Bye. essentially waste my money on yeah. something that looks fun and cool. Um, but these days, I think people are a little bit more sensible. Yes. So they want something that's, impressive and that's fun and special but also something that they can use and mm. i don't think many brands are good at merging the two no, I agree. Shantikai, their products do look quite mm. basic so i feel like they're probably a good example of a brand making it special but making it wearable um and that's probably why a lot of people suggested it i think so yeah yeah another brand that a lot of people were suggesting was fenty mm. now their holiday collection this year we didn't even realize was realize it was holiday we, we talked about it a few months yeah. ago and i'm sure we mentioned it that it was holiday but in my head maybe it we didn't it doesn't look festive and no 
typically if we look at Fenty's past collections they do have a, a festive flair to them they have, not, they have a theme like yeah. there's a there's a like they had like a frosty icy yeah, theme that's the right other year. it's not oval it's not a fucking christmas yeah. tree but it, it's got that like festive feel to it whereas with this collection i'm like that's just general fenty yes and that's where i'm saying like i do think that's gonna sell and people yeah. will buy it and i've heard good things about the eyeshadow palette um, but I do think that that lacks the special. Yeah. To me, I was like, that's a general release yep. that they probably should release just as a permanent product. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, the, the the theme of the collection is they're replicating three of their popular gloss bomb mm. lip gloss shades and they're creating an eyeshadow palette, a face palette, and some other products around those colors and they're very very nude i actually think it's a great idea yeah i love the collection visually in terms of the colors i'm like oh where where yeah. i would wear all of that like yeah. maybe not regularly but, but I would, would you wear, wear it to a christmas party well i probably would I probably but wouldn't. i would want a sparkly something on yeah. my eye yes yeah, but i feel like the collection as a whole is very like um, enhancing it's enhancing yes. makeup so it's just makeup to like enhance what you've got I definitely think it did need some sparkliness in yeah. there for like a little pop on the eye um, but the packaging just is general Fenty it's general Fenty and I honestly think that that's where it's sort of it's gonna falls get lost. down a little it's bit gonna it's get gonna lost. get lost yeah. and look I I would say that palette is gonna be a permanent collection a uh, permanent item in the range that's my assumption based on the packaging limited edition oh okay yeah so the palette's limited edition and i think they're almost fools for doing that because this is an mm. all year round product yeah all oh, right i think they're look i think they're fools what they really could have done with that palette is release it in special holiday packaging mm -hmm. and then make it a permanent item in plain packaging. So if you were gung-ho on it, you really wanted that holiday vibe, you had something yeah. cute, and then if you want it later down the track, you can still get it. I think that's a core product in yeah. a collection. I'm wondering if the reason why the packaging this year is bland is because they couldn't get a manufacturer to make special packaging. Because I'm, I'm suspecting that there's like... Not every manufacturer has the ability to make special sparkly packaging mm. or special things. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be to having like, to source the materials yeah, from somewhere else. Yeah, because they've got to do like special runs. Yeah. They take over the whole factory. And I, I'm wondering if they're like, because of COVID, less people being able to work in factories, um, less ability to source materials and stuff like mm. that. It's just slowed it down. So some yeah. brands have gone, we can't. We have to use our normal packaging. Possibly. Yeah, I definitely think the COVID hangover could have played a part mm. or they just, Wanted... we're, we're going for the people now yeah. want more subdued makeup. Maybe. Which I think is definitely and if you want something sparkle, people want. Just buy more sparkly baubles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or buy the highlighter palette and put it on your eyes. Yeah, true, true. Maybe. Yeah. Um, another one that people mentioned, a couple, one, I don't know if this is really holiday, Luna Beauty. This is more Ooh. of a Halloween, but it, is it, is it holiday? Look, I this don't know. is, okay, so Kat and I were talking about this before. We're talking about the Moon Spell Volume 2 palette. Yeah. Now, I am trying to remember back to two years ago when he released the Moon Spell 1, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that year he didn't have a holiday collection but he didn't classify Moonspell as holiday. a holiday collection either. Yeah, just having a quick look. I don't think Luna Beauty do holiday releases. I feel like no. what Manny does is that he releases a new collection towards the end of the year that mm. sort of encapsulates Halloween, yeah. holiday, whatever. Mm. It's not really linked to an event. It's no. just more released towards the end of the yeah. year. And it's usually themed around his brand theme yeah whatever yeah, yeah whatever the theme is that they're sort of going yeah. for so um yeah so this could be i guess classified as lunar beauty holiday to some mm. degree um i feel like what lunar beauty did and melt has done this as well yeah. a few people mentioned melt i feel like what they've done this year and again i don't know if this is just because people want to play it safe in this sort of un um 
unsafe time, I mm. guess. Like uh, a lot of brands are folding. A lot of people are losing money. Some brands and industries are thriving. So I feel like it's a really strange time to try to operate as business per usual. So mm. I feel like what Luna Beauty did and also Melt is that they have created a round two of a collection that was really, really popular. And I feel like that's a smart idea. It's also a little bit boring. And mm. I don't feel like either collection has lived up to the hype of the first. Um, but I understand that, you know, trying to release something that's safe and that you think will sell yeah. is probably a smart move this year. Mm. Um, so the Lunar Beauty one, yeah, it's a volume two of the Moon, moon Spell. Moon Spell, yeah. yeah. Um, it's more of a red purple palette, um, and yeah. Look, and then he released a, a like, face kind of random face palette and a yeah. lip kit as well. Yeah, 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 more recently. And the melt, it's butterflies. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's butterfly. Which I was watching a, and hearts with thorns. Yeah, I was watching a thing though. I was actually watching something. I think it popped up on YouTube or something the other day, and it was asking tattoo artists what the most um, tattooed theme or mm. thing is in 2021 butterflies mm -hmm. and things that coming back from the 90s like the barbed wire right yeah yeah so Which yeah makes we, sense so the 90s are coming here. around but also they're saying butterfly because it's like a new start okay and people yeah. saying that after this sort of turbulent time mm. a lot of people are trying to do the whole you know come out of your cocoon and wear new butterflies yes. so it's actually interesting that they've tapped on mm. what tattoo artists are saying are the most popular um tattoos of the year yeah i wonder if one of them has a tattoo artist uh close to them <laughs> it's Possibly. interesting the collection is actually themed around um, butterflies well it says comforting memories that you find after grieving a loved one lost. So the collection is, uh, it's a bit heavy. Yeah. So the theme, like they've got a monarch butterfly on the packaging and it's supposed to be believed that the monarch butterfly carries comforting messages from a loved one that has passed. So it's about bringing hope of life after death. Mm. Um, I get that. I yes. do because I remember when my dad died and I would see butterflies yeah. and I was like, oh, that it just yeah. feels like dad. And there is something about that. And yeah. I, I look, this will sound woo, but I believe like if you're feeling that yeah. during one of those times, then it's relevant to you. Yeah. Um, I, and I feel like a lot of people have been grieving over the last oh, couple of yeah, years. So absolutely. Uh, I think it's very appropriate, but I also think, um, it makes logical sense following up like okay a couple of years ago last year was the Beetlejuice the mm. year before was the uh, more eternal one more, yes yeah and this is a sort of nice carry on from that mm. where it still has that sort of um Mexican influence yeah um but it is all about yeah reminiscing about loved ones yeah, and, yeah. and whatnot so I think it's very appropriate for this current time mm. but I feel like they are trying to almost piggyback off the Amor Turno sort of vibe yes um and I, I just don't think it looks as cool I sort of I don't and, either yeah I sort of I've seen and a few, look I'm yeah. just gonna put it out there she mentioned glittery lipsticks before this one this collection has two glittery lipsticks in it yeah I'm and not, I'm just not like, a big fan of that yeah you know, I, I can look at the collection and the story behind it and be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And I understand why it's bright and colorful. But also, it, we still come back to the crux of is it wearable? Yeah. And for many, the answer is no. I do think this palette is a lot more wearable than what we've seen in, in past collections. Mm -hmm. Like even their last holiday collection, yeah. or the one before. But I'm getting major makeup revolution vibes from this. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's elements of this, like people are loving the blush palette. I think that looks cool. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it might be one that you have to see in person yeah. to really love. And yeah, that's We true. can't see in person, so. No, no. Yeah, but I, I can understand why people are excited about it as well, mm. especially if it vibes with them. Yeah, 
Before we continue with this week's episode, we do have some sponsors. Orate is fine jewellery made in New York City, founded by women for women. Pieces range from classic to statement to completely original. All Orate pieces come with a lifetime warranty because it's jewellery for life. It's designed to be worn through all occasions, whether it be a special event or as a core collection piece that you wear every day and don't take off. They will survive the chores, the gym, and the shower. Orate is ethically made in New York City. Their gold is never mined and their gemstones and diamonds are also certified conflict free. Besides transparent pricing, Orate has now teamed up with Klarna to make their items even more accessible to all of you. Basically, using Klarna, you can shop now and pay over time. It's just a more flexible way to get what you want from Orate. The holidays are upon us, guys, and the time for gifting is drawing closer. If you like the idea of gifting jewelry but are worried about the cost or quality, Orate is a brand I can recommend confidently. Their pieces are high quality for a fair and affordable price. In the past, I purchased all of my fine jewelry from brick and mortar stores, but it gets really expensive. After trying out Orate and wearing my earrings for such a long time, I know this brand really does care about quality and would confidently purchase from them again. For 25% off your first Orate purchase, go to oratenewyork.com beauty and use promo code beauty. That's 25% off with no minimum spend and they rarely have discounts as high as 25% off. So I really encourage you to shop now while it's going on. This is the best offer out there and it's exclusive for our listeners and viewers. So once again, go to oratenewyork.com slash beauty and use promo code beauty to get 25% off. That's oratenewyork, A-U-R-A-T-E, newyork.com slash beauty beauty. The holidays are here and with it come the amazing scents. Whether it be from cooking up a storm that includes all of your favorite holiday meals or browsing the holiday themed scents from product ranges, which I have to admit is my favorite part and Native aren't letting us down with their holiday inspired collection. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. So you've heard me talk about Native's legendary aluminium free deodorant. Their mission is to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by creating products that are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil so you can smell great all day long. With classic and rotating seasonals, Native has a scent for everyone. Try their holiday scented deodorant, body wash or toothpaste in scents like candy cane, sugar cookie and fresh mistletoe for a limited time. Giving the gift of self-care is easy with Native. Build yourself or your loved ones personalized product bundles by mixing and matching three of your favorite holiday scented products into a set. The new holiday collection looks great. Give me the candy cane, give me the sugar cookie, give me the fresh mistletoe. They have a wide variety of products available and Kat purchased a candy cane deodorant last year and she recommends it if you are a mint lover like she is. Stay merry happy and fresh this holiday season. You will love Native's limited time seasonal products as much as we do. Go to nativedeodorant.com and use code beautynews to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com code beautynews for 20% off. Again, that's nativedeodorant.com code beauty news. Anna Luisa create beautiful jewelry with a focus on being environmentally aware. They are carbon neutral, use recycled materials whenever possible and create limited batches to help prevent excessive waste. Anna Luisa has a great variety of pieces ranging from earrings, rings, necklaces and bracelets plus they have fine jewelry offerings as well. They release new collections every Friday with pieces starting at just $39 plus they offer a 365 day warranty on all pieces. My new pieces from Anna Luisa are the Sylvia necklace and the Stephanie ring. I really love the stackable rings that Anna Luisa offer so was keen to add another one to my collection. The Sylvia necklace is a deviation from what I would usually gravitate to but I was kind of vibing the layered look and I'm really pleased with the quality of this piece. 
Now I'm eyeing off the new Ursa white, marine and rouge necklaces too because I love a subtle hint of colour. If you're looking to treat yourself or your loved ones for the holidays but don't want to break the bank, you can be confident that Ana Luisa's quality is really good. I absolutely recommend checking out Ana Luisa. You can go to shop.analuisa.com slash beauty news. That's a-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash beauty news. I love them. Their pieces start at just $39 and they are currently running the biggest sale of the year. You can get 20% off if you go to shop dot Luisa dot com slash beauty news. That's A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash beauty news. Another one that popped up as a few uh, people were suggesting that they're interested in and I thought this was in, I don't know. I thought it was funny because I've actually I like to keep track of this as well. Yeah. The Laneige lip sleeping mask new uh, scents of yeah. the year, and they released two this year. Mm -hmm. um, there is a ginger snap and a peppermint one. Nice. Um, and then you also can get them in like mini packs yep. and all stacks of packs. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that's a, a really simple one. I tend to use one of these Laneige lip uh, sleeping masks a year. Yeah. So I can imagine myself being like, oh, the peppermint one would, yeah, I would totally get. You know, I get this as well. I understand. Because it's so usable. Oh, absolutely. I don't know a single person who doesn't use lip balm. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. I do, but fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not important to us. No, they're not. Um, they have crusty lips. <laughs> they have crusty lips. Um... I, I love these packs. I think it's a fantastic and super fun way to get a really nice, effective lip mask. Cause it, like, it'll last you a year, yeah, for sure. A full, full yeah, full one. Yeah, yeah, a big one, definitely. Um, my my only issue is, and look, I, I particularly like the really the small ones in the yeah. multi-packs where you yeah. can get a whole bunch of different flavors. My only issue is I already have too many lip balms. <laughs> Otherwise, That's I'd true. be all over it. Look, I'm... I've only got one backup of these mm -hmm. and I've nearly I've got like a fraction oh, left of my vanilla one. Could... So I've got I've got space in my life for it, but I'm doing a no buy. So unless it's available next year, then mm. you know, maybe I'll delve into the peppermint one. But um one thing that I, I don't look, I I understand the excitement and it's so basic and it's something so usable yeah. and something you can use on a daily basis. But my pet peeve about Laneige is they are shit at picking scents. I yeah. feel like their vanilla is like a powdery, sad vanilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, um, their choco mint one that they had was like a sad, sweet, not even minty. So no. I'm, I'm keen about this peppermint one. Yeah. But I just wish their scents were better, more elevated and interesting. I, I think they could do better as well. Like the pack I'm looking at now, they've got the normal one that you have every year. There's a sweet candy, which just jumped. It came sounds, out last year. I yeah, think. it did yeah and gummy bear also yeah. i think uh lemon sorbet and then there's another one which i there's a there's a peach uh, tea one i think bear, sweet candy mint choco is oh, the other mint one choco in there is sad. yeah i i agree with you i think these are nice lip balms i don't think that they're like no some people rave about them but they're not the best i've tried but they are nice I do love that they have these mini scented fun ones. I think that just adds an air of freshness. Yeah. If they're releasing a couple of different ones every year and then you can buy them in a mini pack, yeah. it's so fun. It keeps that product fresh and vibrant and exciting in your life rather than buying the same fucking pot of Carmex for 20 years. Yeah. That's boring. Makeup even car should be even, fun. Even Carmex even brings Carmex out makes, scented makes, ones. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but I agree with what you said. I think it's super important that your flavors are on point. Yeah, which because they, aren't. that's what brings people back. Yeah, yeah, they, theirs aren't. But yeah. I am interested in smelling yeah. the peppermint one instead. I understand why people like these same, packs. Same, same. Yeah. Uh, a couple of bougie brands that people are excited for: Pat McGrath. We've seen uh, the holiday collection mm -hmm. there, and also yeah. Natasha Denona. Now, mm -hmm. Natasha Denona is a a dribbly brand. They are. We've seen two mini palettes, a new uh, baby size palette, which I actually have my eye mm -hmm. on, um, the Metropolis mini, and also recently some face palettes. Mm, now, yes. there's been no talk of the face palettes being holiday or limited edition, so I feel like they're just a release. Mm. Um, but Natasha Denona, unless 
Again, Natasha Denona is pulling back a little bit like Lime Crime. Um, usually Natasha Denona brings out a big palette yeah. towards the end of the year. So um, I feel like there's more to come, but people people like what she's dishing out at the moment. Yeah. I, I really like her face palettes this year. Yeah. But I don't think they're holiday, so... No. I but I do like, think it's a cool idea. I feel like Natasha really has that true holiday vibe. I feel like sometimes her collections look like they're verging on it, but mm -hmm. also could strongly pass for just Perfect. not holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. agree. We've got a few other ones that people have talked about, but we're going to talk about them we because are, they're on so, our list. Yeah. Um, but the last one that wasn't on our list, um, Tarte. Now, yes. Tarte, I think, pulled back this year. They did. They don't have as much, but I think they've been watching Beauty News. Yeah, I think they've been watching <laughs> Beauty News too. So last year we talked about a lip pack that they had, and they were those juicy, like long, yes, yeah, stick glossy. Oh, they looked really nice. Sticks, and we were saying, and I think we've said this in past years as well, how the pack should be customizable because. Mm -hmm. Not everyone wants a nude, a red, and a clear, or a pink, a purple, and a nude. Like, some people just want all the nudes. Some people want all the pinks. And some yep. people want the fun colours. Well, this year they have a four-pack, and you can fully customise it. And it's yep. $38. And don't buy one before I buy one. <laughs> because I want one. If yep. they sell out, I'm going to be so mad. Yeah. No, I Do think... you want one for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss later um yeah no i think that's a much better way to do it but they are also bringing out just their packs yeah. there's nothing that really stands out as being the holiday palette or the holiday main yeah. focus yeah. it's just like they don't have any like big holiday palettes whereas usually they have 14 big holiday palettes yeah. and 26 small holiday palettes yeah and yeah. then 30 Two, yeah, <laughs> That's um, but they haven't done that this year. They've pulled back quite they a lot. Have, so yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, I look. I don't think that this is where the brand's intended to go. No, I think this is like a fallout yeah. from global conditions. And I think in years to come, we will see a resurgence. And I reckon that that Christmas, when everyone's sort of like back with a bang, it's going to be fucking huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go, exciting. we're going to do some damage. Yes. All right. The brands that we're mm. sort of interested in, and some people were also interested in these brands, mm -hmm. um, but these are the brands that we sort of keep an eye on every year because yeah. we either have liked what they've done in the past or we just find it interesting. Mm. Um, the first one is NARS. Yeah. Now, NARS always bring out holiday palette, a um, couple of cheek palettes, mm -hmm. lip products. Um, this year, the collection, I think it's pretty standard. I don't think it's that I much. I think it's pretty nice. Yeah, but I don't know. Standard is in like, I don't think they've paired back. No, um, no they haven't. Or changed their sort of vibe. I yeah. feel like it's very typical of what they normally yes. release, but I like it. Look, I'm going to say this about NARS, and this is, you know... We've sat here and we've said, we're not sure if it's this or it's that or why brands are dropping the ball. When I look at NARS, I'm like, there are some brands who have the big money and the pull in yeah. the factories and there's some brands that don't, honey. Yeah. They, and I they, think they, NARS is one that does. Yeah, they definitely, I reckon there's manufacturers who are like, no, we cannot work with so, you because yeah. NARS, NARS, it takes precedence. NARS. Yes, I agree yeah. because they have... They've kept the same standard, and if anything, I think they've brought out some cool stuff that are really hard to resist. I know. Their palette Shh. is we're not talking about so it. Next. beautiful. <laughs> the eyeshadow palette. I saw this in store, and it was almost like you can pry this out of my cold dead hands. Shit. Go away, fly! You're doing my head in. So this palette, I'm not shitting you. Like I was, I saw this in store and I swatched it and I like almost gasped. Like the shimmers, like the sparkles are like stylishly merry quality from yep. Mac a few years ago. Like they are gorgeous. And then they have a few sort of color stories and nudes in there. Yeah. I think they've nailed it. I think they've done such a, it's a, quite a festive palette. It's got the sparkle yes. that we're talking about. It's got the nude that's every day, but also a little bit of color. 
I think oh. they've smashed it. I love it as well. I also love their big six pan yeah, glass beautiful. palette. I think and they've got some long pan palettes yes, as well. Yes, they do. Um, and I'm noticing that NARS released a small chunk of their holiday releases and then have like sort of sub-released another chunk. I also really love the eyeshadow palette, mm -hmm. but it's got greens in it and I yeah. just don't wear them so it's funny because i'm the same with the reds in I there know, i was like I know. yeah they we should just be able to like you take out a swap line them out. yeah, swap yeah them out. i know yeah look i love nars holiday collections and historically i always buy something and i'm even browsing the Re mecca website right now so yeah nars always on my radar i really really enjoy their holiday collections one quality yeah Mwah top notch they don't Two, reduce the quality as no well. they don't reduce the quality the packaging is always special as fuck and i love that i love looking at a palette and going wow that's so pretty and it stands and then you out open in your it collection and you go, oh my god that's so pretty but and also you put it on, you're like, fuck it, fuck it, pretty. <laughs> but also with nas i find that their basic packaging is so black and boring that you need the sparkle you need the fun to stand out Absolutely. in the collection yeah. and i will reach for the fun ones over the boring ones mm -hmm. just because they stand out and I'm like sparkle sparkle in yep. my drawer so I think they've done a good job and again these are products you can wear throughout the year they're not just like here's a glittery lipstick for the sake of it um they've actually got some really nice products they also do good value packs with like their yep. mini lip packs and stuff like that and they're you know they're good quality they don't skimp mm -hmm. you're not gonna get you know, shitty lipstick quality compared to their normal lipstick quality. If you buy a mini set of Audacious lipsticks, it's the Audacious yes. formula. It's yes. not like Max, Max Minis. They're yeah. matte, like, or standard lipstick formula. It's different in yeah. the minis. Yeah. So And Tarte yeah. were notorious for that as well, yeah. changing, like, the blush yes. formulation. The Amazonian Com clay yeah. blushes. Yeah. So yeah. They, it, it's, it's legit. Yeah. Uh, speaking of MAC... Mm. Mac holiday collection this year. It's like a hypnotic swirly thing. Yeah. I hate the packaging. <laughs> it's so basic compared to everything they've done. It's yeah. Tr it's it's your typical Mac. Similar to NARS, I guess. Mm -hmm. They are consistent. It's the same sort of releases. You get the advent calendar, you get the vaults, you get the this, you get the sparkly eyeshadows, you get the new shades of lipstick, you get the cheek palettes, you get the eyeshadow palettes. You get everything that yep. they release every year. But I feel like the packaging this year just looks a little bit rushed and it does. It looks not like very well thought out. The Brenda thing could be cool. Yeah. It. The thing could be cool, like that hypnotic sort of if they went some like psychedelic awesome thing. Yeah. Could be awesome. But mm. I feel like they really cheaped out. And that again could be maybe it was hard to source the potentially the best looking packaging. But Mac have dropped the ball many times. Yeah. I um, feel like we and we talk about this every year. Yeah. They do one good year and one bad year. And it's not necessarily the products inside because the products are actually always yeah. the same. Sparkly eyeshadows, lipstick packs, yeah. some highlighters and stuff like that. If you look like if you strip it all back and look at the products, they're exactly the same yeah. every year. Um, it's the packaging that gives it that special yeah. vibe. And I think this year they might have been going for the candy cane swirl and it just looks like Bleh. Yeah, it's 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 based around some hypno it's called the hypno something something yeah. collection. But I feel like they were trying to like merge the two. Yeah. Make it, it like this hypnotic but Christmassy vibe. Mm. And I just think it looks sad. Yeah. But there is some standout products there. Sparkly eyeshadows. Um, look, it I is can, not Christmas without them, guys. But can Just, I say, like, I really want to go swatch them. I'm like, want to wrap this up because I'm. We're like, we want to go to the go, shops we're and we want to go have them. a look. Um, but besides the fact that sparkly eyeshadows, they tend to come out a lot at Christmas time. But if you, if they're a nice one and they're a wearable one, you can. Oh, wear you them wear them year round. The 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 set the from two thousand and. 18 or 2019 mm -hmm. the all of the they're like a pressed glitter but not yeah 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 i bought the whole collection they are fucking amazing yeah the quality is outstanding yeah. and they are some of the prettiest like eyeshadows that i own yeah you put them on and they're so striking mm -hmm. and i have worn them year round and people are like oh what's that on your eye and i'm like hey, you christmas 2018 yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah I, I feel you i do yeah. the same thing so yeah mac's always on my radar but they 
I don't. They don't often get me yeah. with the purchaser, I'm but I'm always interested. To next year's when they will, they will get me with the packaging. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Too Faced is another one that a lot mm. of people mentioned. A few of their yeah. uh, releases, and Too Faced is one that I am always interested in as well. Yeah. I feel like this year. I don't think I think they're doing a typical two faced. Mm. So again, I think they get preference in the in the warehouse, not the warehouse, the factory. Yes. Um, but I just feel like that their ideas are getting stale. I think um, so too. It's very very that there's like a Paris and a London and a mm. something thing and, and a it's, cutesy it's, it's, and a... it's very yeah. reminiscent of things I've done four, five, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some standout collections. I brought out like a little hot chocolate pack with a bronzer yes. and a plumping lip gloss. People are very excited about that. Yeah, it's cute. It's wearable. I get it. Um, and then they do have some value packs like the liquid lipsticks. That... They are fantastic. They are yeah. very, very good. And look, I am actually, this can go in the trends video. I'm predicting that they're going to bring out a new lip formula next year. I reckon it's got to be a gloss without the fucking plumping trash in it because that is trash mm -hmm. just so we're clear and then we save little packs next year yeah probably i reckon that's fair <laughs> uh another brand hourglass we always like to look out for we do but this year they've only released effectively two face palettes which they mm. do every year and they added um a deeper face palette to their permanent line yes but usually they have more. They have I need to the have lip have a products. Rage they yeah. about this. So usually they do their uh, ambient lighting wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Now they do it every single year, and it's getting quite tired. Um, usually what they do is they have like four face powders and then like another or five face powders, like four square ones, one long one. Mm -hmm. There's usually two shades that are new in it, and then mm -hmm. they release them later in the year as permanent shades. This year, they've released two of them. One that's like, you know, light to medium, and then medium to medium. medium. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they've released another little trio wardrobe that's meant to be for deep skin. Mm -hmm. Um I actually, I'm tired of seeing that. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's... they need to let that go. It, it's just, we see it every single year mm -hmm. and um, I'm finding it a bit bland. I find I, it bland the yeah. second year they did it. I, I remember these back six years ago. Yeah, they've yeah been doing exactly. Them. Like they've been doing it for so long, it, it's bland. Now, something that they did let go this year that people would also say, oh, that's bland. I personally don't think so. The um, Confession Ultra Slim Lipstick Duos or Trios for the holiday season. I loved them. They were good value mm -hmm. um, and, you know, limited edition shades. So I really like them. I was ready to see and buy another mm -hmm. one, but it doesn't look like we're getting one this year. Unless they're staggering the releases. Potentially. Yes, they've really yeah. pulled back um, on what they're releasing, which is a a shame because mm. I look forward to those packs every yeah. year as well. So. Yeah, and they usually do other little lip packs, usually brush sets as well. Yeah, massive. Oh, massive expensive brush, yeah, brush, yeah, brush sets. collections. Yeah, so and we haven't seen any of that. And look, maybe they are stagger staggering them. Maybe there is a delay with these things coming Could in be. from manufacturers. They might not release until late November, early December. Yeah. I mean, we... It would still be holiday time. Yeah, so. which is fair because usually, you know, we start to get to mid-November and we're like, we've seen all the holiday releases. Yeah. This is boring. Yeah. So, you know, maybe our shopping will just be a little delayed this year. I don't know, but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've missed that one as well. Mm. It's a real shame. Um, one that you mentioned, which I do agree with, mm -hmm. um, Kylie Cosmetics. Yes. Yeah. Now, not many people mentioned this at all. I don't think no, anyone did. No one did. Um, Not a single person. Only me. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I agree with you because yeah. I really liked what she did with Halloween. Yes. Um, and so I feel like I'm always interested in watching her collections mm. because I feel like she nails the packaging. Yeah. And often has a good, a fresher take on holiday collections. Yeah. And not that I want to buy the products, and I never no. do, but I like looking at them. Now, we haven't seen that yet. She's just released the holidays, uh, the Halloween, Halloween stuff. Yep. So I feel like she's letting that sell. 
Um, but I'm curious to see what theme it's going to be this yeah, year. Yeah, I like seeing what Kylie releases. I often look at her collections and I'm like, you're a person that celebrates that. Like, yes. I can, I can feel... I can see that you're decking your house out in yes, this kind of theme. Correct. And you've created a custom yep. outfit to yeah, go with it. That's yeah, right. you can tell like, that she's, her heart and soul's in yeah. the, the... And I appreciate that. It. Yeah. It's not always for me it's not always a theme that I like um I have bought one of her holiday collections a few years ago uh because I was just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this but um yeah I just like to see them because I think she puts effort into them yes and, and that to me actually goes a really long way I think what where that comes from it's someone that does like to decorate and yes. theme yeah but I also think it you can tell she's a fairly fresh brand so yeah. she's not you know, bored of the creating the same, same old, same old, same old. Here. And also she's got money. And mm -hmm. I feel like those sort of three elements yeah. means that she's and put she, a lot of love and attention into the detail. She does her own shit. She's like, fuck yous. If I want a Santa baby collection, I'm going to make yeah. it. Yeah. And it's, they're not like, you know, oh, we don't want to offend anyone. It can't be too Christmassy. She's yeah. like, no Christmas. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and the last one we want to talk about is Diptyque. Mm. So Diptyque, Bougie Candle Company, yeah. they do bring out some regular scents every year. They do. And they... Oh, do, have you seen the new spinning yes. thing? Yes. And I... I'm so tempted by it. When they, it's like $120 know, in Australia. When they first released one, I was just like, what is that? I need yeah. that in my life, but the price tag, my God. Yeah, and it doesn't even come with a candle. No, it doesn't. It's just the bit that sits on top, and it only fits dip tea candles, by yeah. the way. Oh, um, so, yeah, I look, I really like what dip tea have done there. I don't know if they were the ones that pioneered that. I'm sure they weren't. They were probably the ones that made it obvious to me yeah, and now yeah. I'm seeing them from Everywhere. other brands like yeah. Hourglass is doing it and all that stuff. I, I've seen some sort of candle brands mm. uh, or candle stores do them but they don't look as shiny No and they fun. don't. They don't look as yeah. ornate and yeah. as special and as the dip tea. So ones. what we're talking about is you put this little like carousel type thing over your candle and the heat from makes the, it spin yeah. and it also casts um, shadows, like shadows onto yeah. the wall, which, um, yeah, I, I think the Diptyque ones look a lot more ornate and interesting. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I feel like the ones that you just see at like, um, candle shops or homeware shops are a little bit clunky and look a little bit. They shit. are a bit clunky. So yeah. I think, yeah, so they're not the ones that pioneered it, but I think they've refined it mm. is how I'd put it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. A few things else, a few things else, <laughs> a few things else that we want to talk about. Um, <laughs> So a few things that we like to look out for, mm. uh, value packs. Oh yeah, we love value packs. It's a great time of year for value packs. Yep. A few of note, um, so skincare like Tatcha do some yeah, great ones. Yeah, I love them. Um, Pharmacy yes. has a really cool... They have the little, the mini three pack of their cleansing balm. So they're half size mm -hmm. to the full size one and they're three new scents. Yep. I'm buying it. Yeah, so even if I have fifty already, it's yeah, fine. I've got two. It. Yeah, but they're really nice. That they cleansing are, yeah. balm's gorgeous. So it's a good again. It's a good way to sample mm. things at a discount rate. So yeah, I I either like special or I like value because I'm a bit of a like me too. Want to get my value out of it? Yeah. Um, Bare Minerals is notorious yes. for great value. Um, that was one that a few people brought up mm. as well. Another thing that you should probably talk about yes. is advent calendars. Advent calendars. Now guys. I do understand understand the love of advent yeah. calendars my problem with them is i've seen so many that are just not no, worth the money some of them are rubbish and they're they're very expensive oh, very expensive and i feel like when you open a door and you get a hair tie no or a scrunchie we don't i would throw that. it at the wall <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, yeah i can't bring myself to spending three four hundred australian dollars yep. on a really cool one knowing that I'm getting stickers in a fucking drawer. That's absolutely fair. And I think if you want to get one of the good advent calendars, you do have to put yeah. a lot of money into it. Some people will argue that it's not worth it because you can get the samples for free from blah. In Australia, that's not a thing. We don't, yeah. we don't get free samples with purchases. Um, very rarely. Very, or if they are, they're like sachets. Yeah, like the very, little... very rare. Yeah, um, they're not deluxe no, sizes. Definitely no, definitely not. 
Um, and it is, over the last few years, it has become more common for these advent calendars to contain more full-size products. So I feel like we're like getting there with them, but the prices are still going up. Mm -hmm. They do work out to be good value, but you know, whatever. But they, they remind me, and I think I've got fatigue from um, like mystery boxes and oh, also yes, absolutely. Um, were yep. those monthly subscription yes, boxes? Yeah. I'm so glad though those They're, aren't really a thing these no, days. Yeah. Because you spend all this money and you're like, do I want this stuff? No. no I may no. as well have just yeah. spent the money on buying what I want. Yeah. So that's I've still got fatigue. I've still like that's fair enough. That yeah. Kind of and look, I get it as well because I've got an absolute boatload of samples at home. Did I need to buy an advent calendar this year? No. Did I because tradition? Yes. <laughs> so I think like it, I personally think an advent calendar is an extremely big treat. Mm -hmm. Um you know it's a month long celebration it is yeah and i like i don't think everyone should have them there's going to be people it's just not for them and i totally get that um i think this year what i've seen with advent calendars is they are they're just taken off really mm. we are seeing them from brands that have never made them before um shantakai is one that comes to mind and um the extremely extremely bougie chanel advent calendar where they like a are, full perfume yeah in there. like no holes barred that shit is bougie so i do like to see that that's exciting for me um with the mixed brand advent calendars coming from like retailers like space nk and mm -hmm. cult beauty and all that stuff they are also being forced to step up their game because people are like we want better yeah. bigger and better and they are doing it that's cool their price tags are going up though um but we are still seeing some shit ones as well yeah. oh and i do also want to mention the mac one this year has taken a big step up from when they first started oh, really? doing them yeah there's no empty sample pods oh <laughs> that was ridiculous yeah i know i know this year it actually looks not too bad i still wouldn't buy it but if someone was like, I really want that, I'd be like, I understand why. But also if you're new to Mac, whereas we've tried a lot of Mac in our yes. time. So yep. for us, it's not that exciting. But if you're new and you want to try yep. different things, that's Like if good. I had a daughter and she was like, Mac advent calendar, I'd be like, this is the year I'll buy it yeah. for her because okay. it's not, it's not trash. Yeah. Um, you won't find any fucking weird stickers or shit in yeah. there, which yeah. is really good yeah you mentioned charlotte tilbury yes um that is actually where i think advent calendars are uh, brands are starting to feel the pressure mm -hmm. with advent calendars because they are so expensive uh consumers are very willing to complain mm -hmm. if it's not up to standard and what i noticed with the charlotte tilbury advent calendar this year compared to last year is they're exactly the fucking same thing some slight color changes in the products. And I feel like that's where people are going to look at it and go, no, sorry, no, not you. good enough. And you... Darling, no. Darling, no. You just won't get the people buying them mm -hmm. or you won't get like the repeat purchases or you will have people complaining. Yeah. So... Or all of the above. Yeah, yeah. And I think like <clears throat> with advent calendars because I keep an eye on them every year and I'm seeing them sort of evolve. I think they're coming a long way. I do think that there is a danger of it becoming out of control though mm -hmm. in a couple of years. So, so it'll be like the $7,000 advent calendar, the $5 million advent calendar. Day 24 is a new house. <laughs> like <laughs> A new Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I see it getting out of control, but, um, in the beauty sphere this year, I do feel like a lot of brands really picked up the game with them. So oh, that's good. I'm happy about that. That's yeah. good. All right, guys. So that is it for our little holiday wine tea time. Mm -hmm. um, little bit different to previous years, but feel free to touch on uh, any of the categories that we discussed yeah. in this video. Let us know your thoughts if you've got you know, particular collections that you're excited about or, or what you bought. Yeah. What you bought or, or what you recommend to people. If you're surprised that something 
isn't out there yet or you're mm -hmm. waiting for something let us know because i'm sure you know we're sitting here going where are the hourglass lipsticks i'm sure there are so many people watching this that are like oh yeah where's the blah from blah brand where's the limited edition lime crime glitter hairspray yeah where is it <laughs> that was a thing it was a thing maybe you guys aren't looking for that but that. maybe there is someone so let us know your thoughts down below we are going to go browse the shops. I knew talking about this would be dangerous for us. Yeah, because we've I got knew. another video to film, but we're like, let's go to let's the shops. Let's go very quickly <laughs> to the shops. And look, we are lucky because it's a time of day where we're very limited by how much time we can spend there. That's so true. we hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And nominating. Comment. Oh, that's right. Lucky she's here. Go nominate, guys. Go nominate. There's a blog post, there's links. I'm very sorry, I can't embed the thingies in the blog post. Doesn't work, not my fault. I've tried year after year after year. <laughs> but go nominate, and then in a couple of weeks we get to vote. I can't wait to see what you guys are nominating I either. I do keep track. I, yes, I I'm get keen. In there and I'm a keen bean. Yeah. And this fly. We are gonna, gonna kill it. <laughs> I hate it. We're gonna it's just doing laps, and I'm like, Stop, you piece We're going to empty shit. a whole can of fly spray in here when we leave. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.